If you want to deliver more insight from your data, group by is a fantastic technique. Now you've probably heard about it, but in this video, I want to show you some basic applications of group by, as well as more advanced applications of group by using custom aggregators and your own functions. So let's get started. To begin, we're going to import pandas as PD and then generate a sample reaction data set where we have reaction ID, some catalyst information, temperature and yield percent, and then store this as a data frame. When I show you the first five rows, we have a very simple data frame here where we have a couple categorical variables and some numerical data. So an ideal case for where we want to aggregate using group by. So let's begin with some basic applications of group by. Here we're going to take this data frame and group by the catalyst column here. And then we're going to select the yield percent and then identify the maximum value followed by resetting the index. When we do this, we get a new data frame here where we have each catalyst A, B, and C and the maximum value. Now we can select any of these aggregators. And so here we're now looking at mean to actually match with our average yield. One important thing is that before you actually perform any computation, the dot group by actually gives you a generator. So no calculations have been performed. And you can tell because this is a generator and this is a data frame group by object. Once we select a column, still there are no calculations being performed. We've just generated our series group by object. We don't have an actual calculation until we run the mean operator and then our reset index to take this series and return it to a data frame. Next, let's look at multi-level grouping. We're going to continue with our data frame here. Now let's group by catalyst and temperature C. So catalyst column here and our temperature C column there. And instead of using the reset index, I'm going to set the as index parameter to false. And this will do the same thing here, but usually I see people use the reset index. We're also going to apply this aggregation to the yield percentage column and compute the mean. When we do this, we have our catalyst here, our temperature here, so catalyst A aggregated as well as temperature 100, and then our yield percent there. If we set as index equal to true, we will have our multi-level series as we saw before. And so depending on whether you want a series or a data frame, you have the as index option as well as the reset index option. So next, let's look at more things you can do with aggregators. I'm going to import NumPy. And then I want to generate a more sophisticated data chain where I'm going to take in my same data frame. I'm going to group by the catalyst. And now I'm going to compute the average yield, the yield standard deviation, and the reaction count. So these become new columns in our aggregated data frame. Next, inside this tuple, I'm going to first select my column, which is the yield percent, and then compute the mean. And so for each of these, we're going to apply all of this on the yield percent column, followed by resetting the index to return our data frame. When we run this, you see that we have our catalyst, which would have been the index until we use reset index and these new column headers here. So now we have an entirely new data frame that we can use to deliver new insights or just improve our understanding of the original data set. Next, let's also use group by to fill in missing values. So we have a new data frame called spectra data. And let me show you what this data frame looks like. Here are the first five rows. Let me actually get rid of the dot head and show you the full data frame. You can see we have a couple rows where the peak area has missing values. Thus, the goal of this section is to now fill these missing values based on the mean of each group. So I want to group by here and then select the peak area column next and then transform by using the fill in a method and filling in based on the mean of each of these areas. Thus, if you look at compound X, we have a couple missing values and we can now fill those missing values in using this approach here. If we do this, you see that the missing value for this is 107.5. For this value is also 107.5. But this may not be the best way to aggregate because we can see that all of these are compound X. They're also run at different pH values. And so this is a case where we might want to collect more information or use multiple different columns in our data set to better compute the missing values. Another interesting thing with group by is that we can apply our own functions to the group by operator. 
So I'm going to take the spectral DF and I'm going to group by pH and then I'm going to look at our field peak area column that we have just generated in the last cell. And then I want to apply the compute relative standard deviation method I've created here, this function here. And all we're going to do is take each group, compute the standard deviation, then divide it by the mean, and lastly multiply times 100 to return a percentage. And then we're going to apply that to each of the groups. When we look at pH 7, we see we have an RSD of 8.3%. For pH 8, an RSD of 20.1%. And for pH 9, an RSD of 27%. And so this now allows us to build new functions to better understand our data, all by simply beginning with the group by either a single or multi-index grouping, and then whatever analysis you want to perform on the aggregated data. If you enjoyed the video, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.